All right, we're going to do some more practice for solving inequalities. Uh, we have some graphing, line graphs, and interval notation here. All right, uh, question number one says graph x is greater than or equal to negative 4 using a line graph. So it's already solved for x. We don't need to worry about solving for x. We're going to make a line graph. Negative 4 is the important number. So we're going to use a closed circle, closed point at negative 4. Because this has the equal to bar on it, the point should be closed. All right, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So we're going to shade all the values that are greater than negative 4. And it doesn't tell us where to stop, so those values go off into infinity. So to do the interval notation, we're just making a snapshot of this graph. Because the left boundary is closed, at negative 4 we use brackets. The right boundary is infinity, and infinity always has parentheses. So that's the interval notation for that graph. The second question says graph x is less than 0. So making a number line. Marking zero, a few other numbers. The important number is zero. It's open this time because there's no equal bar. X is less than zero, so we're going to shade less than zero, and there's no right boundary, so these values go off into infinity. So shading into infinity, negative infinity. And the interval notation. The left boundary is negative infinity, which is always open. Infinity always gets parentheses. The right boundary is 0, which is also open, because there was no equal to sign. On number 3, we're going to graph. This is now a compound inequality, because there are two symbols here. Negative 3 is less than x, or x is greater than negative 3. x is less than 2. So the line graph first. This is 0, this is positive 2, this is negative 3, and the important numbers are negative 3 and positive 2. They are both open because there's no equal to bar, and the shading, x is less than 2 but greater than negative 3, and greater than negative 3. So there's the shading. The interval notation will be open at the left boundary, negative 3, and also open at the right boundary of 2. Number 4, x is less than or equal to negative 1, x is greater than negative 4. So these first four were already solved for x. We didn't have to worry about solving because the x was already isolated. So that's fine. This is practice with the graphing and the interval notation. So the important numbers are negative 4 and negative 1. Now this time, negative 1 is closed because there's an equal bar there. So we're going to color in the negative 1. Now where are we shading? x is less than negative 1, but greater than negative 4. So less than negative 1 is here, greater than negative 4. So there's the shading. And the left boundary of the interval notation is open at negative 4. The right boundary is negative 1, but it is closed, so it brackets. On number 5, we're going to practice solving. So that means we need to isolate the x. So let's rewrite 3x minus 4 is greater than 1. To isolate this x, we first add 4 to both sides. So we have 3x is greater than 5. The only, the only difference here is that you have to remember that one extra rule. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the symbol. 
I mean, that happens when you get rid of the coefficient here. We're going to divide by positive 3. So we don't need to flip the symbol because we divide it by a positive number. So if x is greater than 5 thirds. On number 6, let's rewrite 12 minus y greater than or equal to 11. So to isolate this y, first subtract the 12. So we have negative y greater than or equal to negative 1. Now we have to get rid of the negative 1 on the y. So dividing by negative 1, and of course this is what we were just talking about, when you divide by a negative sign, you have to flip the direction of the symbol. So this now becomes less than or equal to. It doesn't change the fact that this now reduces to make positive 1y, and these reduce to make positive 1. y is less than or equal to positive 1. We have a few more practices on the next page. So starting with number 7, we're going to isolate x. So 2x minus 5 greater than or equal to 4x plus 8. Uh, the first thing we need to do is put all the x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract this 4x and again, I said this in the lecture, it's just best to put x on the left with these because traditionally they're read as x is less than something or x is greater than something. So we're always putting x on the left. So subtract 4x from both sides. That gives us negative 2x minus 5 greater than or equal to 8 because those cancel. And then add 5 to both sides. We get negative 2x greater than or equal to 13. And then we're going to divide. The coefficient is negative 2. What happens when you divide by negative 2? You have to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. So this now becomes less than or equal to. We have x is less than or equal to negative 13 over 2, which doesn't reduce. So we're okay with that answer. On number 8, we're going to have to simplify before we can solve. So I'm going to actually simplify this as I rewrite it. We're going to distribute to get rid of those parentheses. So I'm just going to distribute and I'm going to rewrite underneath here. So we have negative 6w plus 8 plus that extra 5 from here is less than negative 4w plus 28. Now we have like terms over here that we should simplify. So negative 6w plus 13 is less than negative 4w plus 28. Again, I'm going to put all the w's on the same side. So I'm going to add 4w to move them over to the left. That gives us negative 2w plus 13 is less than 28. Okay, now we can isolate this w first by subtracting 13. I have negative 2w is less than 15. Divide off the coefficient, which is negative 2. Now when you divide by the negative, don't forget, you're going to change the direction of the inequality symbol. This becomes w is greater than negative 15 over 2. <clears throat> All right, number 9. Oh, number 9 is a compound inequality. I know it's compound because it has both, it has two symbols there. So we have negative 5 less than or equal to z plus 5 less than or equal to 12. All right. 
isolate this z in the middle, undo this plus 5 with a negative 5, so minus 5. We use the vertical lines in the lesson where the inequality symbols are just to keep our three different areas separated. All right, so we have z less than or equal to 7 on the right, greater than or equal to negative 10 on the left. Oh, and that's it. So negative 10 greater than or equal to z, greater than or equal to 7. All right, for number 10, again, we have two less than symbols. So this is a compound inequality. I'm going to start by rewriting it. Negative 11 is less than 3 minus 4x is less than 19. And I'm going to use the vertical lines here to keep things separated. I need to isolate this x here. So first thing I'm going to do is subtract 3 on the right and on the left also. That doesn't change my inequality symbols. I now have negative 4x in the middle. 19 minus 3 on the right makes 16. Negative 11 minus 3 on the left makes negative 14. To get rid of this coefficient now, I have to divide by negative 4, also on the right and on the left. All right, when you divide by negative 4, it makes these symbols flip because we divide by negative. So this is reduced to x in the middle. This reduces or divides to make negative 4 on the right. On the left, we have uh, a positive 14 over 4, but that reduces to make 7 over 2. So always make sure you're reducing your fractions completely. So our final answer being, oh, you know what else? We said this in the lesson. It's not standard. It's not traditional to use the greater than symbols on these. It's always traditional to use the less than symbols. How do we do that, though? If you flip these two numbers, trade these two numbers, you can flip this from greater than back to less than. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trade these two numbers. Negative 4 is less than x is less than 7 over 2. And this would be your final answer. It also kind of makes sense because negative 4 is less than 7 over 2. Obviously, it's a negative number, and this one's a positive. So if you read this correctly, the negative number should be on this side with the positive number on this side because they go numerically with the less than symbols from lowest to highest. All right, what do we have now? Number 11, solve for y. And we need to simplify before we solve. So I'm going to go ahead and do this distribute while, while I'm rewriting this. So we have negative 3 less than or equal to negative 2 plus 6y less than 10. So negative 2 times 1 gave us negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 3y gave us positive 6y. So again, let's put, I'm going to use some vertical lines here just to help me out. I need to isolate this y, so add 2 to both sides, uh, 3 on the right and the left. So those cancel, and I just have 6y in the middle. Less than 10 plus 2, and negative 3 plus 2 makes negative 1. Divide by 6. To isolate that y. Um, and it's not a negative 6, so we don't have to worry about flipping the symbols this time. So we just end up with y in the middle, those 6 are reduced, 2 on the right, and negative 1 sixth on the left. Negative 1 sixth is less than y, which is less than 2. Ooh. Number 12, again, let's distribute while we're rewriting, okay? So we'll distribute this 6 in here. 
as we rewrite. So negative 2 less than or equal to 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times negative b, negative 6b, plus 4b, less than 25. And we have some like terms here in the middle. We have negative 6b and positive 4b. So that's negative 2 less than or equal to 18. Negative 6 and positive 4 make negative 2b less than 25. Now we can use our vertical lines to help us. And we're isolating this b. So we need to subtract 18 first on the right and on the left. All right, that's not going to change our symbols. That's going to give us negative 2b in the middle. 25 minus 18 is 7. Negative 2 minus 18 is negative 20. And then we're going to divide by negative 2 to isolate that. And of course, that's going to change our symbols to greater than again. So that's going to give us b in the middle, negative 7 over 2 on the right, and positive 10 on the left. But again, it's traditional, and it also makes sense mathematically to put these in the opposite order and use the less than symbols. The negative 7 halves is less than 10, so we're going to trade this order just like we did before and change them back to less than. So negative 7 over 2 is less than b is less than or equal to 10. All right, and you can notice that the less than or equal to goes with the 10, so it's over here. There's no equal to on this one, so this is just the less than symbol. 